it's so fraught with like uh, expect that what's not being captured is like we would hope for a change and then we would we'd plan and would work so hard on it whether it was OTPT speech and then it wouldn't happen and the devastation you feel and at some point you whether it's acceptance or whether it's resignation, I don't know, but it just, <sighs> do you stop trying? I, it's not, you stop trying because you're still doing all the care and you're still trying to do all the supports, but I guess there's a, a realization that you may not achieve that. And while there is a huge letdown and, and um, it can be demoralizing to have that realization, there's also a freeing and, a sense of maybe it's not so critical that we push everything and maybe we are able to set a little bit less stressful priorities. Um, I remember when Katie was little and you know EI would come and the OT would work with her and say, now I want you to do just these two things, this and this, and tell me how it goes next week. And I go, oh, okay, you know, and, and the teacher would come and say, make sure you try doing this um, during feeding. Oh, okay. And then, um, who else, speech or somebody would say, and give another little homework. And, and each one was very reasonable. But by the end of the week, I had 12 things I needed to try in addition to giving her you know, 14 medications four times a day and remembering the timing of which one goes where. And it's like, it became absolutely overwhelming. And um, yet I felt like I had to do every one of those things to be a good parent. And eventually you realize you just actually can't. I mean, maybe some, some women and families can, but I couldn't. And so I had to kind of start taking that information in, not disregarding it, but using it to figure out what my priorities are for Katie and what, you know, my partner's priorities were for Katie and work, put the most attention to those. Even if that meant that some days I had to say, we didn't try that this week or no, I didn't get to that. 